What is up, Catalyst? Hey, we took a week off last week with Christmas, and sorry, it's a day late today. I had some issues last night um, with the recording and uploading of the video, so I'm just redoing it today. I uh, hope you're having a great week, week back uh, after Christmas break. Man, it's about time to get after it and uh, get back to discipleship and leadership. Um, as we're going to talk about today, just uh, some couple things that are in my heart as we go into 2022. Uh, just a reminder that this week starts back our um, Google Sheet. Make sure you're filling that thing out. That's how we keep each other accountable, right? That way I can make sure you're filling this stuff out. And it's not just you clicking a box, but you're giving me a thought-provoking uh, sentence or two about this video. And then at the end, something that you've learned. Because if we're not learning stuff every week and we can't apply it to our lives, then man, what's the what's the point, right? We got, we got to win, grow, and send it. If, we're, if I'm not growing, I'm dying, right? So it's just daily intake and outtake. Intake, and what can I do to, to replicate it? And Lord, speak to me and change me, right? So um, let's just talk about uh, something that's prevalent in our society today. If you're going to be a leader, and if you're going to be a disciple maker, you have to, listen, write this down, you have to refuse to become offended on the second part of that man you have to refuse to offend purposely okay there's a big difference so let's let's talk about this refuse to become offended ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 21 says this do not take to heart all the things that people say lest you hear your servant cut cursing you your heart knows that many times you yourself have cursed others do not take to heart all all the things that people say, lest you hear your servant cursing you. What, what's the Bible saying here? Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Man, people are going to say stuff. People are going to say things. People are going to do things. Don't take it to heart. That's what the Bible says, right? It's just very clear. Just don't refuse to take it to heart. It says, lest you hear your servant cursing you. What I take out of this, what Paul's writing in Ecclesiastes is that Man, there's a point where we can become offended, have an offended spirit to where we hear things that people are saying that they're not really actually saying. Come on, right? But well, we think they're saying things. Or, man, the way they're acting when I'm around them, I'm just assuming what they're saying. I, I, I'm assuming that they're talking about me. I'm assuming that they're things, saying things about me. I hear from the grapevine they're saying things about me, and I get offended and put up this guard around me where I, I don't love and I don't act right. And here, I'm just telling you, man, there's no place for that in the kingdom of God. If you're going to be a leader, if you're going to be a disciple maker, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, do not take to heart what people say, lest you hear things. You're going to, you're, you're, the enemy wants you to become offended to where you think that everything that people say and everything that people do and the way they look at you, that they're talking about you. And man, how can we lead people like that? Come on, right? I have to refuse to become offended. Uh, the Bible says this in uh, Matthew 24. And many shall be in the last days, shall be offended, and will betray one another, and will hate one another, because evil shall abound, the love of many, and the love of many shall wax cold. Offense leads to my love for God waxing cold, right? I have to refuse to become offended. I have to refuse to take to heart what people say, to refuse to let the enemy convince me that everything that people are saying and doing and looking and is against me. That's not true. It never will be true, right? We have to stand guard and realize, man, I'm a child of God, right, man? And if I want to lead people to Jesus, man, I, I can't have this thought process going around in my head. God is for me. He's not against me, right? I'm in a family of God. The enemy wants to divide and conquer. And if I, I allow him to win when I become so easily offended, right? Second part of this is being offended when accountability comes your way. Man, it's so easy when someone calls you out on something or, or stands up and says, hey, I need you to do this or hey, you've been slacking to become offended and think, well, who are you to say that to me, <laughs> right? I have to refuse to become offended. In this Catalyst group, we're four weeks in, I believe, there's going to be times where I text you or I comment or something like that, and I just push you. Man, I'm challenging you. Refuse to become offended, right? 
you signed up for this this catalyst group man let, let's let's go after it right um I, I'm gonna keep you accountable that's what I signed up to do for you we all need accountability and it's not singling you out or it's not um man, I'm not trying to degrade or nothing I just we're pushing each other to become more and more and more I've got leaders in my life mentors in my life that when I, I drop the ball on uh, doing my devotions or I drop the ball and checking in or something like that and they think I'm struggling or I'm out of uh, out of whack or whatever you know man they push me and they challenge me and I, I need that in my life they will stop challenging me when I when I, if I start becoming offended and get upset at that that challenge will not will stop coming my way and man I'm hurting myself so I need you guys to step up and realize if there's ever a moment where I text you like hey man hey girl Let's jump on this Bible plan. Hey, make sure you get in the, in the Word of God today. Or, hey, uh, I've been noticing this. Come on, we got we can do better. The, the, I'm doing that out of love, right? And the people in my life are doing that out of love because we need people to push us and to challenge us. So refuse to become offended at others or what people say. Refuse to become offended at what you think people are saying, right? Refuse to become offended when, um, when someone challenges you and pushes you. The Bible is just clear. Just don't be offended. There's a difference in in offense and being offended. Offense is when something comes my way and immediately guards go up and I get offended for a moment. To keep, that that happens, right? But it's my choice to walk in offense. If I'm always offended, that's my choice. When someone says something and I don't like it, like "Hey, you fat," <laughs> man, offense comes up, but I can refuse to become offended and and keep going, right? On the flip side of this. Refuse to purposely offend. Um, man, it's it can be easy sometimes to take little jabs at people, people that have done us wrong in the past. Maybe someone that broke up with us. Maybe something someone we think is talking bad about us behind our backs. We take little jabs, little comments, little things here and there. Um, man, we have to refuse to do that, right? Refuse to do to be anything other and. Refuse to use our tongues for evil rather than than good like God's called us to. Because the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the power of the tongue, right? So refuse to say things purposely to offend. For example, if I ask a student to step up and to lead something, to, to be mature and to lead something, um, and someone else in this group says something like, oh, you can't do that. There's no way you can do that. I, I, I know who you are. Can I tell you, you're wrong for saying th something like that, right? Uh, that That's offending on purpose for no reason. And I'm speaking death rather than life. Offense, uh, it's one of those things as leaders that if we allow ourselves to be offended and we allow ourselves to purposely offend, we lose every bit of credibility and influence over people's lives when we start to do that. I, I can't minister while I'm also offended. Uh, let me tell you this. You can either obey or you can be offended, but you can't do both. I can't walk in obedience while I'm walking in offense. I just can't. I can't minister to people while I'm walking in offense. I can't be who God's called me to be while I'm walking in offense and I'm harboring offense. So I challenge you. If there's someone that you've held some offense towards or you're offended at something that someone said or did, can I challenge you today? Rebuke it, first off, because the fence is from the enemy. Man, ask God for forgiveness. And if you've got to have a conversation, have a conversation. Because it's not worth losing my influence in someone's life because of something they said or did, and I'm just holding on to it, right? Offense and bitterness, that kind of stuff is like, it's like drinking poison myself and expecting and waiting for the other person to die. That's not how it works. I'm doing nothing but hurting myself, my testimony, my influence, my credibility, the the calling God has on my life, not their life. It, it's offense is is making someone a prisoner, and that prisoner is you. You're putting yourself in a cage, and it just there's no place for it. So I challenge you: refuse to be offended. Refuse to be offended at what people say, do, what you think they're saying or doing. Refuse to be offended when someone challenges you and refuse to purposely offend. Use your tongue for life, not death. Come on, man. I love y'all. So thankful for you. This Catalyst 2022 is going to be the greatest year we've ever seen. But I can't walk in greatness while I'm walking in offense.
Amen and amen. Love you guys. Hey, once you watch this video, comment in the group me. I refuse to be offended. And uh, let's get after it. Love y'all.